Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is binary subarrays with sum. So in this question, we're given a binary array called nums and we're also given an integer goal. And our task is to return the number of non-entry subarrays with a sum equal to goal. And by definition, a subarray is contiguous part of the array given to us. So let's take the first example given to us. Here, as you can see, this is the input given to us and the goal is 2, which is the sum. So we have to find subarrays within this nums array with sum up to 2. So here you can identify one array. So 1, 0, 1 is a subarray whose sum is equal to 2. And I can see one more subarray, 1, 0, 1, 0. Here also the sum is equal to 2. And there's one subarray here, 0, 1, 0, 1, whose sum is also equal to 2. And there is one more subarray. 101 whose sum is also equal to 2. So total there are 4 subarrays whose sum is equal to 2 which is the goal. So 4 will be your output. So here as you can see the main point is that you have to calculate the sum of every subarray. So the brute force approach will be that you find all the subarrays and you find the sum of every subarray and check if it is equal to goal. So that will take a time complexity of O of n cube because O of n square is for finding the subarrays and O of n to find the sum of that subarray. So total O of n cubed you can make it to big of O of n square by finding out the sum whenever you are forming the subarray but these two are brute force approaches and these will fare for longer nums arrays. So here we have to calculate the sum of every subarray right and check that sum with a goal. So you can implement it using prefix sum because you iterate through the input array and calculate the prefix sum for every index. So let's see what is the prefix sum for this. So let's calculate the prefix sum we start with the first index. So here the sum is equal to 1 and here the sum is also equal to 1. Here the sum is equal to 2, here the sum is equal to 2 and here the sum is equal to 3. And you might just see that whenever the prefix sum is equal to 2, you increment count. There are two prefix sums 2 which is equal to the goal. So you might think the answer is 2. But here you see that there is a 3 which means that if the current sum minus the goal. So current sum is 3 here, right? So 3 minus goal is 2 which is equal to 1. We have to check if we encountered a prefix sum 1 earlier. So 1 is appearing 2 times, right? So it means when you move the prefix sum, so prefix sum will always start from the beginning index, right? So here as you can see, we proceed further and keep adding the cumulative sum. But if we want to calculate this prefix sum from here, even then you might find probable answers. So here you can see you are finding two more subarrays, 0, 1, 0, 1 and 101. So we have to keep track of the prefix sum. So not just finding the prefix sum, we have to store them in a hash map and check if this sum minus goal is already present inside the map. So this 2 will be added to this 2 and you get the total count as 4 which is the expected output. Now let's do a dry run for this example by using a hash map. So I create a map. So the key is going to be the prefix sum and the value is going to be the frequency of prefix sum, how many times that prefix sum is occurring. So let's iterate through the array. We start with this element and keep track of the sum. So I create a variable sum which is initially 0 and now I add this element sum is equal to 1. We check if this 1 is equal to goal. No. So count will remain 0. So we keep track of the variable count which is initially 0 and this count will be returned as the output. And now add this value 1 which is the prefix sum and now add this value 1 into the map and it's occurring one time. And now go further. It is pointing to 0. So add 0 to the sum. The sum is still 1. So check if this prefix sum 1 is present inside the map, yes, so increment its value. So the prefix sum 1 has appeared 2 times until now. And now we move forward and the value is 1, so add it and the sum becomes 2. And the sum is 2 which is equal to the goal, so it means we found one pair, so increment the count by 1. Now check if this sum is present inside the map, no, so add it and set its frequency to 1. So it means the prefix sum 2 has occurred once until now. We add 0 to the sum and the sum becomes 2 and again this prefix sum is equal to goal so we increment the count and the count is now 2. Check if this 2 is present inside the map, yes. It was earlier having 1 so add 1 into it and now the value becomes 2. Now move further, we add 1 into the sum and the sum becomes 3. And now since the sum is 3, check if sum minus goal, the so sum is 3 and goal is 2, 1. Check if this 1 is present inside the map. Yes, 1 is present inside the map and it's occurring 2 times. So add this count 2, add its value into the count. So 2 will be added and you get 4. So here it means we were calculating the prefix sum from the beginning, right? So from this point until this point, we calculate the prefix sum, which is currently 3. It doesn't mean that since 3 is not equal to 2, there is no subarrays which is equal to the goal. Because this is a binary subarray, these 0 values 
will change the equation. So it means if we want to move the prefix some value further. So if we move this further, here also we are finding binary subarrays. So this is one subarray and this is one subarray which is satisfying the condition. So that is why we maintain this map and from this map we are checking this if some minus goal is present inside the map. It means using these values you can find binary subarrays which sums up to goal and that value is this 2 which is occurring 2 times so we add 2 here and the count becomes 4 which is expected here. So you do this check for every iteration I only showed you whenever sum is greater than uh, goal but you place it inside the for loop so that you don't have to do special checks. Now let's take a look at the code. So here as you can see first we're creating the map and creating a variable count and creating a variable sum. We're iterating through the input array using a for each loop. So we iterate one at value at a time and keep adding the sum. We check if the sum is equal to goal only then we increment count. But also if sum minus goal is already present inside the map then we get that value and add it into the count. Like in the last case so these two will come from this equation. And before starting a new iteration, we are adding that uh, prefix sum into the map and keep incrementing it value whenever you are finding that value prefix sum already present inside the map. And once you come out of the for loop, you return whatever is present inside the value count. Count has the value 4 for this example. So 4 will be returned as the output. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n because you are iterating through the input array nums here. And the space complexity is also O of n because you're using a hash map to store the prefix sum and its count. So the space complexity is also O of n where n is the length of the nums array. Now let's quickly take a look at the two pointer approach. I'll show you how we can solve this using O of 1 space. So here you notice that we have to compare the sum of the current uh, subarray. So how do you take subarrays? You take two pointers, right? So let's say this is the start pointer and this is the end pointer and you keep incrementing the values. So here you can convert this question that instead of finding for subarrays which are exactly equal to the sum goal, you can find subarrays whose sum is at most goal and you can also find sum which is equal to at most goal minus 1. And once you find this and once you find this, if you subtract this, you will get subarrays whose sum is exactly equal to goal. And now rest of it is same. You keep moving the start pointer and end pointer and keep adding these two values. So let's take a look at the code and then see how the code is working. So here as you can see first we are calling the helper function on goal and we are subtracting it from goal minus 1. So this will give you the count of subarrays with sum at most goal minus 1 and this will give you the count of subarrays with sum at most goal. And when you subtract that you will get count of subarrays exactly equal to goal. And this means that if goal is less than 0, you can directly return 0 as the output because the input contains only zeros and 1s and you can't get a negative value from goal. So there will be 0 subarrays if goal is negative. And now again we are keeping track of count and sum and these are the two pointers start and end sliding window and start pointer will iterate until it reaches the end and we keep adding the value at start. So initially start and end both are here. We keep adding this value into the sum. So first we have to check when goal is equal to 2 and we have to check when goal is equal to 1 because we are doing goal minus 1 2. So these two values are important and we are performing sliding window here. We keep adding the value at start into sum and when the sum is greater than goal we subtract the value at end and end keeps on going forward. So this is important here start minus end plus 1 we have to add it to its previous count. So initially start and end are here right. So 0 minus 0 plus 1 will give you 1. So you add 1 into the count. So first we are doing when goal is equal to 2. So count is equal to 1 now. And now start will go forward in the next iteration. So now start is here. Now again we have to do start minus end plus 1. So start is 1. 1 minus 0 plus 1 is equal to 2. So we add 2 and the total count becomes 3. So it means that so you still are accessing these two elements only but how are you getting count 3 so the count 3 represents 1 this subarray 0 the single subarray and combined 1 and 0 so all these three subarrays individually are having sum at most 2 so you similarly you do all the values here and you repeat the same process when goal is equal to 1 and you subtract the 2 and whatever is present will be returned as the out so do a dry run for this test case and you'll know how the code is working so this is basically the idea here. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n because you are iterating through the entire array using sliding window and the space complexity is constant O of 1 because you are not using any extra space to solve this question. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.